Today, we'll be looking at how scientists create the first ever living programmable organism. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the illuminating scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. A remarkable synthesis of artificial intelligence and biology created the world's first living robot. This week, a research team of roboticists and scientists released their recipe for a new life form called stem cell xenobots. The name Xeno derives from the cells of the frog, Xenopus levius, used to make them. One of the researchers identified the development as neither a traditional robot nor a known animal species, but as a new class of artifact, a living, programmable organism. The xenobots are less than one millimeter long and made up of 500 to 1,000 living cells. They have a number of basic forms, including those with squat legs. They can drive themselves in linear or circular directions, band together to work together, and move small objects. They will survive up to 10 days using their own cellular capacity. While these reconfigurable biomachines could scientifically enhance human, animal, and environmental health, they raise legal and ethical issues. Strange knew the creature. In order to make Xenobots, the development team used a supercomputer to test thousands of random prototypes of basic living things that could execute such tasks. The machine was programmed with an AI evolutionary algorithm to determine the species will possibly perform useful activities, such as heading towards a goal. After choosing the most successful prototypes, the scientists attempted to reproduce simulated versions of frog skin or heart cells that were manually joined using microsurgery methods. The heart cells in these bespoke assemblies contract and relax, letting the organisms move. The development of Xenobots is groundbreaking. While described as programmable living robots, they are actually entirely organic and made of living tissue. The word robot has been used because Xenobots can be configured into various forms and shapes and are programmed to target specific items that they unwittingly look for. They can even restore themselves after they have been hurt. Possible Implementation Xenobots may have a great deal of importance. Some speculate that they may be used to disinfect our contaminated waters by gathering microplastics. They can also be used to access restricted or toxic environments to scavenge pollutants or radioactive materials. Xenobots equipped with carefully formed pouches could be able to deliver medicines to human bodies. Future variants can be made from the patient's own cells to heal tissue or target cancers. Being biodegradable, Xenobots will have an advantage in plastic or metal technology. Further production of biological robots could accelerate our understanding of living and robotic systems. Life is extremely complicated, so controlling living beings could uncover some of the mysteries of life and boost our use of AI. Legal and Ethical Issues On the other side, Xenobots pose legal and ethical issues. They could also be used to hijack life processes for malevolent reasons in the same manner as they could help target cancers. Some claim that artificially creating living organisms is unnatural, overbearing, or requires playing God. A more convincing issue is that of accidental or deceptive use. As we have seen of innovations in fields such as nuclear physics, chemistry, genetics, and AI. For example, xenobots could be used for aggressive biological purposes banned by international law. More evolved future xenobots, particularly those that live longer and reproduce, could theoretically malfunction and go wild and compete with other organisms. Xenobots will require sensory and nervous systems for complex tasks, likely resulting in their sentience. A sentient engineered organization will pose new ethics concerns. Last year, the revival of the disembodied pig brain caused outrage about the suffering of different species. Danger Assessment The developers of the Xenobot have correctly recognized the need for debate on the ethics of their production. The 2018 controversy over the use of CRISPR, which enables genes to be inserted into an organism, may offer an instructive lesson here. 
While the aim of the experiment was to reduce the vulnerability of twin girls to HIV AIDS, the resulting risks induced ethical dismay. The scientist in question is in jail. When CRISPR became readily accessible, some scientists called for a ban on the editing of heritable genomes. Others argued that the gains outweighed the costs. Although each new technology should be treated impartially and on the basis of its merits, giving life to xenobots poses some important questions. Are xenobots meant to have biologically kill switches in case they go rogue? Who's going to determine who should reach and monitor them? What if homemade xenobots are possible? Will there be a moratorium before the legal mechanisms are in place? How much supervision is needed? Lessons gained in the past from developments in other fields of research could better mitigate possible risks while reaping potential benefits. Short lane, long road ahead. The development of xenobots had separate biological and robotic precedents. Genetic modification has developed genetically engineered mice that become fluorescent under UV light. Designer microbes can produce medicines and food additives that can potentially replace animal farming. In 2012, scientists developed an artificial jellyfish called medusoid from rat cells. Robotics is thriving too. Nanobots can track people's blood sugar levels and can gradually remove clogged arteries. Robots will integrate living matter as we observed when engineers and biologists developed a stingray robot powered by light-activated cells. In the coming years, we're likely to see more creations like xenobots that elicit both wonder and worry. And when we do, it is crucial that we stay open-minded and analytical. What's your take on this? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you on the next one.